Hey everyone, welcome to another Top 10 List. This week's Top 10 List are, on a new one of course, this is the Top 10 Notes that Don't Have a Central Figure. So that is definitely a new one to do. Uh, top 10 Notes Without a Central Figure. Now normally if you, if you look in your wallet nowadays and you pull out a note, you're going to see that there is a president or at least a signer of the Declaration of Independence or a founding father. You're going to find somebody important dead center on that note. But that's not always been the case. So I went through and I found 10 notes where there is no central figure. <laughs> so let's take a peek at what, at what these are and uh, I'll see what I can tell you about them. Number 10 on my list. Number 10, we're going back to 1864. Uh, this is a fi uh, $500 note from the Confederate States of America. Um, yeah, technically not U.S. currency, I understand, but still a note that most U.S. currency collectors like to collect. This one is the uh, probably the most prominent one you're going to see in most collectors collections because it is the most widely available and obviously like i said there is no central figure yes it's got stuff on the sides yes it's got the denominations but as far as the center of the note just says confederate states of america will pay the bear on demand five hundred dollars now this is, of course doesn't have anything on the back this one is the replica that i've got uh you've seen my real one in previous videos but yeah that would be number 10 on my list uh one of the wish list notes that i had that i was able to knock out this year so I did get one of these. It's just safe and sound in my safety deposit box. That would be number 10. Number 9. We are going with my, uh, the uh, national currency from 1950. 14. If I remember, that was 1914, series of 1918. Yep. All right. Uh, national currency. This is from the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, that means each of the Federal Reserve Banks backed these notes. This particular one would have been backed by New York. Uh, so that's what the prominent display is right here. Yes, it's a $1 bill. Yes, it's got George Washington on it. Um, but in the center, prominently, you've got the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. We'll pay to the bearer on demand $1. Now, if this note looks familiar to you, well, it should, because the backside is what makes it famous. This is the Flying Eagle. Uh, very similar to the imagery used on the Flying Eagle Penny as well. Uh, this Flying Eagle from 1918. Very cool note, very prominent note, and also one of the few notes that does not have that central image. That is number nine on my list. Number eight. Number eight is... I've got a treasury note. This is a treasury note from 1891, and uh, dead center still features the $1 in coin, and it features William Stanton, the Secretary of War under Abraham Lincoln, uh, probably the greatest beard on currency, actually. <laughs> now, uh, this one being a treasury note, what that means is that this is not backed by gold. It was not backed by silver. It was backed by one of those. They just didn't differentiate it. They simply said that the treasury has enough coin in gold, silver, copper, platinum, bronze, brass, whatever whatever uh, currency you wanted to use, uh, in precious metal. That's what this was backed by, in some type of coin. So uh, it didn't necessarily have to be gold, didn't necessarily have to be silver, but there was $1 in coin in the treasury of Washington, D.C. to back this note. Take a peek at the back. You can see a lot of white on here so that they were able to make it tougher on counterfeiters so you could see the red and blue fiber in the paper. All right, so this is the 1891 $1 Treasury note featuring uh, Stanton, uh, Secretary of Treasury from the Civil War under Abraham Lincoln. That is number eight on my list. Number seven. Also features a Civil War hero. Uh, this is the $2 silver certificate from uh, 1886, if I recall. Yep, 1886 $2 silver certificate. And this was General William Scott... Oh, what was his last name? i got to check in my book real quick. Uh, I, I knew it. I looked it up before, and I forgot it. Winfield. William Scott Winfield, is that correct? Nope. <laughs> It is General Winfield Scott Hancock. That's who that is. Uh, at a glance, it looks like Teddy Roosevelt. It is not Teddy Roosevelt. It is Civil War General Winfield Scott Haddock. Uh, Hancock. 
And uh, yeah, this is an 1886 $2 silver certificate. Now you can see dead center. Uh, it does have a really cool font for the United States. You got that extremely large uh, seal that's stamped in there like that. Taking a peek at the back. This really cool swirl. If they didn't already have a note called the Lazy Deuce, I wouldn't be surprised if this would have been called that uh, with the way that that swirl works like that. It's really cool. Uh, very cool design on the back there. Uh, number seven on my list, the $2 silver certificate from 1886. Number six. Looks a little familiar. Also from that 1918 set. Uh, this is a Federal Reserve Bank note. The $2 Federal Reserve Bank note, this particular one, is from Boston. And like you can see, dead center, they're talking all about the Federal Reserve Bank rather than having a president or somebody else prominent on there. Of course, featuring uh, Jefferson. And, and uh, the, the reason that this note ever is uh, so, so well in demand is because of what is on the back. It is the battleship. The $2 battleship note from 1918. Uh, definitely high on most collectors' lists. Uh, not something you, you're used to seeing on currency, that's for sure. Uh, the Battleship Note from 1918 is in demand by collectors of currency as well as collectors of uh, history and of uh, you know naval, naval themes, war, uh, war memorabilia, stuff like that. Because, like I said, it, it may have been our currency, but you don't see these very often anymore. Um, that makes them highly desirable to many different types of people who want to collect different things like this. So yeah, the $2.1918, once again, does not have a central figure on the front. Pretty important central figure on the back. That's the USS New York. All right, number five, right? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, yep. Number five. This is an 1891 $1 silver certificate featuring Martha Washington. Now, Martha Washington's offset here, dead center. We're talking United States, one silver dollar. So, yeah, they didn't put her front and center, but they did put her on the note. And the $1 1891, this is the first time that a named woman appeared on U.S. currency. Um, I say that with a little asterisk because I'm specifically saying the U.S. government putting this out. Uh, obsolete banks, well, obsolete banknotes will feature a variety of women on them. However, those were printed by the banks themselves, so that wasn't technically U.S. currency. It may have been currency that was valid in the U.S., but not printed by the United States government. Take a look at the back of this one. Once again, they do use a lot of the white on the background to make sure that you can see the red and blue fibers to help make it counterfeiting much more difficult. This being the 1891 $1 silver certificate. That one is number five on my list. Really cool note, right? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Yep, number five on that list. Number four. This is a note you don't see very often at all. Um, this is an 1880, uh, 18, sorry, 1882, right there. 1882 $20 gold certificate. Uh, most of you are familiar with the 1922 gold certificate that I always bring out that features George Washington. Uh, also the Technicolor note, that one was from 1905. But we did have $20 gold certificates before them, and that's the, that's what this is. This is the 1882 $20 gold certificate. And you can see the image is on the side, and dead center is where you've got the seal. So once again, another note that... Uh, is centrally promoting the denomination and gold coin rather than a figure. And if you look just right, you can see that it does say the word gold in the background here like that. Take a look at the back, the familiar gold printing that you see on a lot of gold certificates. A uh, really cool picture of an eagle there. Definitely, an, <laughs> definitely a, a back you don't see too often. And I like how they got gold written here. That's pretty cool as well. So that's number four on my list. This is the 1882 $20 gold certificate. Number three, going all the way back, 1882, or 1862, I should say. 1862 $1 uh, legal tender. This one features Salmon Chase. Uh, if you don't know Salmon Chase's history, you should dive into that. Uh, it's amazing the amount of stuff that he did. He was a Supreme Court justice, among other things. Uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, I should say. Um, 
the $1 note from 1862, you can see does not have a main figure dead center. It's more off to the side. Uh, kind of like the flag, you know, I mean, our flag's got the stars here and then you got the stripes here. So it's an interesting uh, look. Now, I've had people tell me about this one, two, and three, this being the $1 note, so the one was highlighted. Um, I would understand if the $2 had the two highlighted, but it has a three and we never had a $3 bill. So I'm not exactly sure how to explain that particular type of imagery on there. Taking a quick peek at the back, a uh, beautiful note on here extremely fine printing on the back you can see this one is a replica which means that you cannot see all that detail that's in there um that's why it was there if this is a modern replica imagine how difficult it would have been to forge this note back then so yeah very intricate pattern on the back of the original 1862 one dollar legal tender that's number three on my list number two also, from way back, this is a lazy deuce. Uh, this started in, uh, this one here says series of 1873 on it. Uh, 1873 is what it says? You know, 1875. Um, these were first available in 18, I want to say 1860, no, 1875 to 1895. Was that the charter? No, no. 1862 to 1882 was the first charter. Uh, this particular one represents 1875. Now, the Lazy Deuce, once again, does have a picture. It is offset. Dead center, you're talking about having that deuce there. You're talking about having the United States. Uh, this note is secured by bonds in the United States, deposited with the U.S. Treasurer in Washington, D.C. Now, the Lazy Deuce was a national bank note, which means that um, banks had to prove that they were worth their salt, essentially, and uh, people would come out and check the banks, check their bank books, and if everything was good, the bank was able to put money on deposit, and they could then print money up to 90% of what they had on deposit. That would mean that this particular note represents the La Crosse National Bank, so the La Crosse National Bank would be able to print money, and uh, these are essentially just glorified checks. Um, they could be deposited... Uh, they can be spent anywhere, and they could then be redeemed by bringing these back to the La Crosse Nat National Bank. That was the one that was insure or ushering that they were still valuable. And that's I'm going to be doing a whole series on national banknotes and trying to explain those a little better. I've got an interesting book that I can share with you on that. But that is the uh, Lazy Deuce. This one here says 1875. Uh, the series started in 1865, and each particular bank would come out with their own stuff until 1882 when the second series came out. But this one, first edition, first series. That's number two. What did I put for number one? A classic. <laughs> this is the 1896 $1 educational note. The $1 educational note from 1896, this was put out to help educate the public. Uh, this particular imagery on here is... Uh, history inspiring youth and if you read all the names on the side those were all famous names of the time and many of them are still known today uh, there's lincoln right there uh sherman and let's see you know there's fulton uh just you know so so many different there's washington franklin um so many different names on here of people that were well known there's grant uh, anyway, 1896. Now, instead of using a central figure, this one decided to use the entire scene, and the focal point of the scene does seem to be over, off to the side. Uh, dead center right here, not a whole lot of nothing there. <laughs> Basically, the pedestal that they're sitting on has all the information you need, one silver dollar right there. Uh, looking into the back, you can see the Washington Monument, you can see the Capitol, you can see the Potomac River, and you can see the Constitution. Let's try to zoom in on that. Uh, this one being a replica, it's a little tough to read, but on the real notes, you can read most of that stuff that's on there. On the back, you've got Washington, both Martha and George. Uh, so that's definitely a cool background right there. So that is number one for notes that do not feature a central image. Uh, if you agree with my list, go ahead and hit that like button. If you think I missed one, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you guys have an idea for a list, go ahead and put that down in the comments as well. If I use your idea, I will put your name out there in front so everybody can see who suggested it for me. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you again next week.